Well, good morning. You were kind of muffled. <laughs> so it's so good to have all of you here. And um, um, thank you for, for the masks. Um, as we uh, work to keep each other safe and sound, uh, we'll do this until we hear a little bit more from the uh, CDC and our rates of infection within the Brown County area. I know it's um, just not uh, very uplifting but um, it's uh, also been a long time that we've been fighting with this struggle. Uh, but the struggle goes on for many folks. Uh, have just heard of a couple more folks connected to Calvary that uh, have uh, picked up COVID in a very serious way. And so uh, pray for those folks and all the medical folks that are um, helping them try to stay healthy as well. Um, but if you're looking for a change of pace, from 1 to 3 today, outside, is our Vacation Bible School. It's a little bit diff it's very different from what we've done in the past. Um, unfortunately, especially for Pastor Rufus, uh, the dunk tank, I guess, is broken. So there won't be a dunk tank. for He had volunteered to be our, our dunk E. But uh, there will be all sorts of other activities going on, uh, activities for families, for kids, uh, for, for big kids uh, like yourselves as well. And then no movie night this Wednesday, just as a reminder. And as you can see up on the big screen, uh, because we don't know about weather and we don't know about gathering, we thought um, a farewell card shower for Katie uh, as uh, she's preparing to um, finish up her internship. She will be up in Marinette for the next year, as well as she has six classes uh, in seminary. Now, no big deal, uh, a normal load's four classes, so six she should just handle with no big, no problem. So she's going to have a, a long, arduous year. We want to send her off with our best. And then um, she's got a sprint for the next, I think it's uh, 16 months uh, before she will be done with uh, her seminary education. So are there any joys or concerns that you would like to lift up this morning? other than for the offensive line with the Packers and the special teams and the defense. and you, But uh, those are just minor uh, concerns. Uh, Kent, um, show us the finger. So he's got it taped, uh, so he's making some progress. If you weren't here last week, uh, Kent had uh, uh, broken part of his uh, middle finger. And so Emily, we thank you for being here today. Uh, she filled in last week and is filling in this week. We still get Kent's voice. I was hoping it was my turn to lead the singing, but I guess not. Someday, Someday in my dreams. And um, uh, so he'll be singing, leading us through, and Emily will be playing as well. Uh, if you could flip to the next slide, Evelyn. We are also um, have um, orientation going on and registration for our confirmation program. That's just right around the corner as we move into September. Uh, so we are ready to go, looking forward to getting with the kids. Sunday school uh, is planning to go forward as well. Uh, they've made accommodations for using our biggest rooms with our smallest groups. Uh, kids will be masking until uh, we get out of this uh, highest range of infection. Um, so we'll see what we can do, uh, but in the meantime, uh, we will continue to worship, we will continue to serve, and do our best uh, to make Christ known in this area. So as you are able, let us all stand as we begin. Our song of community is United at the Table. United at the table, all our joy is joined in song. United in the faith, all our joy to God belong. We will praise God, we will sing hallelujahs with hymns and with psalmody we will praise god for the love that sustains us eternally united at the table all our joy 
is joined in song, united in the faith, all our joy to God belongs. We will praise God, we will feast at the bountiful table of life and grace. We will praise God and give thanks for communion with every race. United at the table, all our joy is joined in song. United in the faith, all our joy to God belongs. Good morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Loving God, we confess that we have turned away from your will to follow our own ways. Forgive us for the times we have spoken or acted too quickly. We have not spoken or acted at all or we have heard those closer to us, and we have heard those who have yet to know. When we have made ourselves more important than we really are, and we have thought less of ourselves than we are, forgive us, turn us around, and give us a fresh start so that we can live as your children. Amen. Here is the good news. Even when we have done wrong, God sees the good in us. God gives us a fresh start. God's love never runs out, and God never tires of calling us beloved children. Here God says to you, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Our song of gathering is, By Your Hand You Feed Your People. By your hand you feed your people, food of angels, heaven's bread. For these gifts we did not labor, by your grace we have been fed. Christ's own body, blessed and broken, cup or flowing life outpoured. Given as a living token of your world redeemed, restored. In this meal we taste your sweetness, bread for hunger, wine of peace. Holy word and holy wisdom satisfy our deepest need. Christ's own body, blessed and broken, cup or flowing life outpoured, given as a living token of your world redeemed, restored. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we thank you for your presence among us this morning. Your son gives himself as a living bread for the life of the world. Lead us to abide in Jesus' presence and be strengthened by the word of life to serve you continuously through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. 
our first reading from Ephesians chapter 5. Pay close attention to how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. Make it the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the word of the law is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is the butcher, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father of all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Please stand for the hearing of the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our Holy Gospel is from the Gospel of St. John, the sixth chapter. Now Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will <clears throat> live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Well then, the Jews disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat of my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which our ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. You, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. If you've been following along from week to week, this is about the fifth week in a row where uh, we've been stuck in that section, or <laughs> we shouldn't say stuck, but are reading that section of I Am the Bread of Life. I uh, was talking to Katie just on Friday as she was um, pouring over her computer in the office going, you know, <laughs> I'm running out of ideas of what to say. And uh, over the years now, so many years that I've been preaching on these texts, uh, it's always good to be on a staff because then uh, over the five or six weeks when we continually stay with the bread of life, um, you get somebody else in there that might have another uh, way of looking at it. So let me repeat something here because I think it gives us a key for what's happening. Uh, in the gospel it said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. That's kind of a key phrase. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. So those words are familiar. They're comfortable and very in, in, initially invitational. But the more you listen to them, the more questions you have. So after five or six weeks, even those uh, who are listed in the gospel are saying, now wait a second. How can this guy say that? One, we know where he came from. He's just Jesus from Mary and Joseph down the road. He, you know, he's just a regular person. And now, how can he say, eat uh, my flesh and drink my blood? There's something wrong with that. There's, he's, he's talking as if he's God and that he has this uh, great power. So what I usually do at that point when I start going, wait a second, 
the analogies and the statements aren't holding together. Uh, the, the rule is always go back and read what comes before the text, what comes after the text, so that you see what is uh, the main point that's going on. So first of all, what's Jesus really saying? We're in the Gospel of John. John is intricately written so that it hangs together from the very beginning to the very end. John chapter 1, just a few verses in, says this. Now Jesus was in the world, and the world had come into being through him. So go back to Genesis 1, and it all holds together. John did that on purpose. But he says, yet the world did not know him. And we see that right in this gospel. Just a couple of chapters into the gospel of John, chapter 6, they're saying, how can this be? This guy is just one of us. So the world didn't know him. He came even to what was his own, and they didn't accept him. In fact, they threw him out of town. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, who listened, who gave him the power to become children of God, he gave them who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh, but of God. And then the key phrase, the word became flesh and lived among us. We've seen his glory, and throughout John, there's all sorts of uh, examples of where Jesus pointed directly to God and showed God's presence. Glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and full of truth. I met someone this week for the first time, and their hobby was woodworking. And I said to them, oh, my dad was a carpenter and oh my goodness he just opened all up so he knew if this is your father and this is what he did well then we've got some commonality because anybody who's done something that the father does knows all the ins and outs and so um, I still carry a saw in my workroom uh, at home that uh, was my dad's his first saw and uh, before my two brothers found it I grabbed it and hid it in my house so every time I go in there, I know I'm in my dad's presence, who's been gone for 30 plus years. So that's what Jesus was trying to say. When you talk to me, you talk to the Father. What the gospel of the writer of John was trying to say, Jesus was in the world from the very beginning, and he is the word made flesh. And so what is Jesus said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. He's carrying on that very same path and that very same tradition. So if you take all that all as one, you start to see that there's some connections that this gospel is trying to make for folks who are struggling with, well, now what do we do? Um, any of you struggling today as you got up and said, now what do we do? We're back to wearing masks. We're back to sitting apart. We're back to um, worrying about uh, the football team in town. We're back to worrying about our friends and our neighbors because still more people are getting sick. Where do we go? And Jesus says, you see, in all that is and all that is yet to come, through me, you will see God's grace. You will be in the presence of God. The very God that gave creation, gave us life, gave us forgiveness and hope. If you're willing to, re, uh, to, re, um, to allow Jesus into your life, Jesus is willing to teach us, to show us, to literally go through hell and back to remind us nothing's going to ever separate us from God's love. And if you allow that into your life, you too will have that life. Think of it for a moment like this. Um, last night uh, in our house, we had some pizza. Now, if you wait a good 24 hours or so, where has that pizza gone? It's been absorbed into my body. You couldn't open me up and dig it all out and say, oh, there's the pieces of pizza. No, it's been absorbed. It's abiding within me. And so when Jesus says, I abide in you and you abide in me, that means it's all integrated and it's wrapped in one to another. Abiding is to integrate that from one person to another. And so we as the body of Christ... We, too, are doing that very same thing. And so that's why we spend five or six weeks in a row in worship talking about the bread of life. There's a lot of people 
who are hungry and are wondering, is anybody going to care? Is anybody going to feed them? Is anybody going to look after them? So when Jesus says, now, as you have been fed, you feed the hungry. We do it not to make ourselves feel good or not to say, okay, I fed somebody who was hungry. Now I get to go to heaven. It's not a free get into heaven card. It's when it's part of us is who we are in what we do and how we live. We tend to the least, to the lost, to the broken, because that's what Jesus did. The woman at the well, he shouldn't have been there talking to her. The 10 lepers had a fatal, highly contagious disease. And Jesus went to them and said, may you be healed. Show yourselves and let others know who did it. To Zacchaeus in the tree who was just looking for just a glimmer of hope and would anybody even allow him to talk to Christ? And Jesus says, come on down. I'm going to eat in your house today. That's what this is all about. When Jesus abides in us and we in him, the work we do is so that others live off of our own strength. So often it's that tendency is I'll help out, I'll give, I'll do something when I have some enough extra. And Jesus is saying, no, it's the other way around. To find more is when you give of yourself first. You see, abiding in the body and blood of Christ is not done to get the free trip to heaven. It comes to us first through Christ alone. He was in the world, the world didn't know him. So Jesus came and became the word made flesh so that we could see him, hear him, touch him, taste him, smell him. God's presence. Oh God, where are you? The cry so often heard in scripture is then fulfilled in Jesus. Here I am. This is what it looks like to follow after me as best you can and when you can't follow in the ways I go. I will forgive you and hold you and pick you up and as we heard in the uh, confession this morning, give you that fresh start. God doesn't want anyone to be left out. We have life not as a reward, but as an opportunity and then a commissioning to use it for another. So make no mistake, if we spend five weeks in a row in worship reading through texts that sound the same, the same, the same, it's because God says, listen, 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 I want you to know this because it changes how you can see life and how you live. The hungry and the sinner, uh, look around. Go ahead, turn your heads. See the other people that are here. They're here amongst us the broken, the hurting. That's those people that are amongst you. They look just like us, and sometimes they don't look anything like us. But if you see someone walking and living and breathing, that's one that Jesus was talking about. Christ abides in you so that you can bring and be Christ to another. So how do we do that? We abide in God's word in our worship or as in the first reading it said in our singing in our hymns in our spiritual songs that just that doodling in our minds or on our lips where we let the spirit kind of blow through us and lead us abide in the word know it read it I was at a conference on Wednesday and um, these are all people of faith and they talked about their favorite Bible passages and, and they had them all wrong. It's like, obviously, you haven't read your favorite passage in a while. So read it. It gives you life and it gives you hope and direction and keeps you, uh, as we say, following in Christ as one who's humble, who's open. It's never leave it far from you. Because God knows, literally, God knows 
when you will need to know those words to be filled with the flesh and blood of Christ, to feed, to teach, and to love another as Christ has loved us. The word has come in flesh to live among us. And the word abides within us. You now are called on to be that pre presence of Christ to another. Amen. Our hymn of the day is O Living Bread from Heaven. My Savior, you have led me within your holiest place, and here yourself have fed me with treasures of your grace. For you have freely given what earth could never from heaven that now I shall not die. Oh, grant me then well strengthened with heavenly food while here my course on earth is lengthened to serve you free from fear. And bring me home to praise you Where none can peace destroy Where I will ever raise you Glad songs in endless joy People of God, please join me in confessing the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, O oh Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on a purchase pallet, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The response to our prayer today will be your mercy is great. Gathered in God's presence, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. God of wisdom, we thank you for the word we receive today and for our gathering. Enlighten your church. Help us to see greater experiences and invite others into a deeper understanding. Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to your calling. God, in your mercy, God of creation, mend the earth, increase our awareness of changing climate patterns, and reveal new approaches to the challenges we face. Shoot those in the path of hurricanes or tropical storms. God, in your mercy, God of all nations, direct our leaders, grant them courage to lay aside political manipulations, and renew their determination to address difficult conflict. Guide them in a work of reconciliation. God, in your mercy, 
Almighty God, we pray for those on Calvary prayer list, those who will be going through surgery, those who are experiencing COVID, and those are recovering, and those that will name in our heart at this time. God of compassion, rescue those tormented by mental illnesses, ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia and our caregivers. Come quickly to help all who are grieving and all those who are suffering. God in your mercy. God of all life, give us the living breath from heaven through which we abide in your love. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. We share God's peace with one another. You know how to do it. Let us pray for the offering. Everlasting God, you are the God who provides. You are the God who strengthens your people. We pray that you continue to bless them continuously, even those that give online, those that mail in. Jesus, indeed, you are the bread of life. You have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather we have what we have sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join us on any hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, and gave disciples, said, take and eat this, my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shared for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Sitting together, let's pray as Jesus taught the disciples, our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shared for you. Let us pray. Jesus, indeed, you are the bread of life. We have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Our sending hymn is On Our Way Rejoicing. On our way rejoicing, gladly let us go. Christ our Lord has conquered, vanquished is the foe. Christ without our safety, Christ within our joy, who if we be faithful, can our hope destroy on our way rejoicing as we forward move hearken to our praises oh bless God of love unto God the Father joyful songs we sing Unto God the Savior, thankful hearts we bring. Unto God the Spirit, bow we and adore. On our way rejoicing, now and evermore. On our way rejoicing. As we forward move, hearken to our praises, O oh, bless God of love. Go in peace and serve the Lord.